Hey sports fans! When someone described to me what a clicker game was on my phone, my first reaction was, what? But then I played one called Basketball Clicker, and all I can say is, O-M-G. As soon as I started competing with other players online, I was hooked. You can draft offense and defense, form teams, compete with your friends, unlock new gear, and lots more. So give our friends over at Basketball Clicker a download using my links down below in the description and get your fingers in shape so you can bring the sound of the swish to your phone. You in? Russell Westbrook has just done something no player has accomplished for 55 years. Average a triple-double for a whole NBA season. After losing former MVP Kevin Durant last offseason, the league was prepared for Russ to go nuclear, and he did not disappoint. No one came to destroy the defense on a nightly basis more consistently than Westbrook did this year, and his historic feat is a testament to his physical dominance and sheer force of will. Of course, Russ is extremely polarizing, and many, including me, have criticized his shortcomings. While there is still plenty of room for him to improve, you can't overlook the volume of numbers he put up. A record-breaking 42 triple doubles, and the more important stat, a record of 33-9 and nine when he earned them. So let's dive into the footage to get a handle on how he amassed all those points, rebounds, and assists. The most common category for Russ is the pick and roll, executing it over 35% of the time and rated in the 71st percentile. Out of the 31 players with at least 400 pick and rolls, he ranks 21st. He is clearly the best when the pick and roll is set on the right side and he can attack with his dominant right hand. It's where he gets a lot of his threes in the pick and roll where he can find some space and hop into them for good rhythm and elevation. He gets the vast majority of his pick and rolls out top and when the screener gets decent contact on his man, it's hard to stop him as he gets going downhill. This is where he can maximize his athletic ability as these plays allow him to get right into the middle of the lane. Notice the Spain pick and roll we broke down earlier this season as if Brina sets a back screen on Cantor's man and the lane parts like the Red Sea for this hammer. Once he forces his man into a trail position, the pressure he can exert on a defense is tremendous, mainly with his threat to score. While he blows by people with straight speed most of the time, he does have some herky-jerky hesitations that get the defenders all out of position. The biggest issue I can see with this pick and roll game are the turnovers. He ranks 24th out of those 31 players in turnover percentage, and they mainly center around his habit of jumping in the air to throw the pass. This is common among supremely athletic guards who can find success doing this at times, but in the NBA, when there are athletes all over the place, these types of plays lead to trouble. His other issue is with the pocket pass, where he tries to force it into a space that's simply not open. The timing and accuracy of these passes is paramount, and it was striking to me to see how many turnovers he had on normal reads. Next up is transition, which he does 20% of the time, but really struggled to be efficient. Of the 33 players with at least 200 transition possessions, he ranked 29th. One reason he struggled so much is pull-up threes. He was decent shooting threes in the half-court offense at 35%, but that number drops to 29% on the break, and over the last month, a whopping 20% of his transition shots have been from behind the arc. Another issue that will keep coming up is how often he threw the ball away. When you isolate the turnovers, a pattern emerges. Throwing long, down-court passes is something he should probably limit or eliminate, as it's the main reason why the Thunder would come up empty on the fast break. These are the plays where he can find space to accelerate and create great shots before the defense can set up, yet time and again, he'd throw errant passes that simply were not open, or were open, but by the time he got rid of it, that lane had closed down. And there were some similarities to his need to force passes in the pick and roll. The same thing happens in the break, as he will throw passes that don't have much hope of getting through, either because he can't see how the defenders are shaping up, or he simply has so much supreme confidence that he's willing to throw them and hope for the best. Either way, with a team that lacks a ton of offensive firepower besides Russ, throwing away opportunities that would allow his teammates easy shots is mind-boggling. And let's look at the success when they actually get the ball to the front court quickly. We get treated to all the great highlights and dazzling displays of hesitation moves into explosion to the rim. 
These are the moments when we get to see how devastating Russ is, when other professional players hopelessly try to stay in front of him and prevent him from doing his bidding at the basket. No matter how many bodies try to retreat into the lane and wall him off, these are the times when he cannot be denied and the powerful and acrobatic finishes leave everyone breathless and out of their seat cheering. Now let's look at his isolations. Of the 32 players who used at least 150 isos, Russ was right in the middle at 17th, about average. However, he was second in the league in total isos, right behind Harden, and it's a huge drop off after that. He loved to dribble the ball up to the left wing, size up his man, then blow by him towards the baseline. He really likes driving to his left, and if I were the Rockets, I'd send a second player to shadow him whenever I saw him dribble the ball up to this side of the floor. The isolation from on top is his most common spot to start from, and they love to have Adam set a back screen on his own man in the lane, then let Russ just blow by him to the rim with no help by the defense. Again, you'll notice how often he goes to his left in these situations, where the threat to pull up is greater since going left means his body is already in alignment to the hoop. Russ takes advantage of this with subtle hesitations that get him right by his man for creative finishes. Before I started going through the footage, I assumed his post-up would be a pretty common action and that he'd be rated pretty high at it. Turns out, he only uses them 7% of the time and is below average in efficiency. One reason may be that he gets most of his post-ups the exact same way, dribbling the ball up and towards that right block down low. And there's also a distinct lack of variety in his post-up moves. The overwhelming amount of possessions result in a turn over his right shoulder for a dirk leg or just simply a pull-up jumper drifting away from the defender to get space. And these makes all look great. But there are times he rushes the shot without any rhythm, and in the playoffs, where teams have time to prepare, they're going to sit on that right shoulder and contest these shots better. And if he doesn't vary his attack more, these post-ups will come up empty quite a bit. Now let's look at his assists. The most common way he racked them up was from the high pick and roll, where he could orchestrate the whole play and decide how it was going to go. He loved going to his left, then passing back across his body to the top, where either the roll man can get a basket, or the weak side shooter can lift to the top for an open shot. His gravity is so strong that the whole defense would shift towards him, and this is where he made his teammates better without question. Here's Spain pick and roll again, and the Sabonis screen opens up the little jump hook for Steven Adams. The pick and roll is where Russ had the best court vision, and while he forced too many passes, he also balanced those turnovers out with nifty passes inside for easy scores. Because Robertson isn't much of a threat on offense, it's a great idea to have him screen the ball and roll hard to the rim where he might get ignored. Now let's look at his defense for a little bit. I know how much has been made about Russ hunting for rebounds and ignoring his man to hang around the basket. There are certainly some damning stats out there, like the fact that he's second to last ahead of only Jamal Crawford in contested shots. Of the 109 players who played at least 2,000 minutes, he's ranked 99th in contesting threes, ranked among mostly centers. The problem is, having gone through around 400 defensive clips, there are so many like these where he's clearly disengaged from his man, but it's okay because his man isn't a threat to score, so it's perfectly acceptable for him to hang around the key and then grab a defensive board. I tried to find a lot of instances where he ignored his man, got lost, and gave up threes, but they were hard to find. For a vast majority of the possessions I watched, nothing stood out at me too much. The issues I have tended to be not finishing the whole play. Here's good defense on Kyrie, up until the point he goes for the reach around and gives up the layup. And here's good position and a great contest of the shot, but Kyrie still hits it. He didn't always sense the moments when he should help, like this switch onto KD was good, but then lets Curry waltz to the hoop for a reverse. He also loses focus, even on players as great as Curry, and it gets him in all sorts of trouble when he tries to recover. Ball watching is a favorite pastime, and again, it works against most of the guys he's guarding, but how he could do this against Curry, I have no idea. When he is engaged, he can be a plus defender, as he gets physical with Curry, keeps him in front, then contests nicely. But he'll struggle seeing the play ahead of time, like this pin down, then takes the wrong route to get back to him. More ball watching as he loses step and needs Gibson to come over to contest this into a miss. This kind of defense will not fly in the playoffs like it did in the regular season. 
Of course, this clip went viral, but what's overlooked was that the first half of the possession was very good defense by him. For whatever reason, he simply can't concentrate long enough to keep up with Curry, who floats to the corner for a wide open three. Here's another example of really good defense by him after the initial penetration. He sprints back to Lillard and is in great position, but then ball watches, loses him just enough for a flare cut, and it gives up easy penetration and a floater. So we don't need to get too in depth on the free throw rebounds, other than to say the whole team committed to clearing the way for him to grab them, and it's what got him the triple double average. The only question is, would he win the MVP award if he didn't have the triple double narrative? These rebounds don't affect the flow or the outcome of the game, and it was awfully nice of his teammates to commit to doing it. Let's get one thing straight. Letting Russ get the rebound here does not benefit the offense in the slightest. These are missed free throws where the defense is set. There is no notion of starting a fast break, which is why Russ must get these rebounds. That argument is nonsense. So there you have it, sports fans. That's how Russell Westbrook had one of the most historic seasons of all time and why he will win the MVP award. He was able to balance the focus on individual accomplishments with generating wins for his team. By all accounts, this Thunder team overachieved by several wins, and Russ literally saved them from disaster on numerous occasions by his sheer will and talent. The only question is if you want to cling to a traditional philosophy that gunning for stats is bad or if you feel that his absurd usage rate held his teammates back from being better. Or was this the best opportunity for the Thunder to compete? We'll never know that answer, and perhaps it doesn't even matter. It certainly won't for the media members who turned in their MVP votes. Sports fans, do not miss our bonus exclusive content over at B-Ball Breakdown Plus. Become a patron and receive up to three exclusive videos per week you cannot see anywhere else, including breakdowns on all the players slated to be in the NBA draft this year, like Lowry Markkanen, De'Aaron Fox, Dennis Smith, Luka Doncic, and more. You in?